So some of this is going to be a little bit of a review about proteins since we've already talked about them in pretty much every section. So uh, we're going to start talking about plasma protein and total protein again just as a review. And plasma protein, of course, you get from centrifuging down whole blood that has not clotted, so it's anticoagulated whole blood. So it could be citrated plasma, EDTA plasma, even heparinized plasma. And of course, this is going to contain albumin, globulin, some people refer to globulin as globulins, and fibrinogen. And so since total protein we usually get after a clot plus centrifugation will only contain albumin and globulin. And how you actually get globulin is that you subtract albumin from total protein and you get globulin. So it's actually a calculated value globulin is it's not a measured value. All right, remember that fibrinogen um, as well is can be measured in different ways. And so we can do this via heat precipitation where you spin down uh, anticoagulated blood in micro or in those little microhematocrit tubes and you can heat precipitate out the plasma, out the fibrinogen, and then remeasure. And that has a lot of error, so there's a lot of inherent error in it. And that's what we you often get in a CBC um, that I'm providing you. And then there's quantitative methods, which are much better. So this is only going to see really big increases, uh, while quantitative measures are going to pick up more subtle differences. And the other thing to remember, there's a, actually a whole separate video that's just that repeat video of the ruminant uh, inflammatory response. But remember that we can do our plasma protein to fibrinogen ratio to determine inflammation versus dehydration when your fibrinogen is actually increased. So you only do that when fibrinogen is increased. And the thing that's important about that is fibrinogen can increase in large animals prior to any cellular change. So before you see an increase in white cells or even a decrease in white cells, uh, you can see this increase in fibrinogen. In horses, you might see toxic change or a few bands prior to neutropenia or inflammation. One thing that's important is that these proteins are actually considered positive and negative acute phase proteins. And so the positive acute phase proteins means that they increase with inflammation and so that would be your globulin is a positive and fibrinogen is considered a positive while your negative acute phase proteins decrease production or their production is decreased with inflammation and that's albumin and there's other acute phase proteins that we're not really going to discuss okay one last thing to mention just on here is that um, albumin and fibrinogen, they're actually both made, this is getting a little bit messy, sorry about that. Let me fix that. So albumin, I don't think I fixed it that great. Albumin and fibrinogen are both made by the liver, whereas globulins are actually made by uh, B cells that are terminally differentiated into plasma cells. And so this can be under the influence of um, antigenic stimulation where plasma cells start making gamma globulins, immunoglobulins, um, or from plasma cell or B cell neoplasms. We'll talk about that at a different time. So we're just going to go through kind of some general situations when you have increases and decreases, and then we'll go into more detail, especially for decreases in a, a different day, different lecture. So increases in both albumin and globulin of a similar mag magnitude, we've talked about this several times, is dehydration. And so if I could write it, dehydration, there we go. So when albumin is increased, of course, that's always dehydration. And if globulins increase similarly, we assume that it's from dehydration. And when albumin and globulin are both decreased similarly, it suggests sort of big hole losses. And that's going to sort of be apparent when we talk about just when albumin's lost. So big hole losses means that you have some sort of bleeding or hemorrhage. Uh, with a loss of red cells along with protein, because of course protein's smaller than red cells. 
some sort of protein losing enteropathy and you may also see a decrease in cholesterol with these and protein losing enteropathies we'll talk a little bit more about uh, later but they have to do with infiltrative GI disease so it could be inflammation, neoplasia, um, other things uh, and then burns are another one although that one you need kind of a different history so these are the ones that we see most often are going to be bleeding so then you're going to look for a decrease in PCV and protein losing enteropathy, you may or may not have that, uh, that decrease in cholesterol, and we'll talk more about that. So then you can have what we consider selective increases. So we had a selective, or excuse me, a non-selective increase or panhyperproteinemia when you have a, your increase in albumin and globulin. Then you had your selective, excuse me, non-selective decrease, which is panhypoproteinemia, and then you can have a, just a selective increase in albumin, and of course this is due to dehydration. So a selective increase in globulin is going to be due to something with plasma cells increasing production of um, immunoglobulins, right? So that would be, typically we consider that antigenic stimulation from maybe inflammation, it could be chronic inflammation, or we see it with plasma cell neoplasia, so multiple myeloma, also called just plasma cell neoplasia of the, plasia of the bone marrow or spleen, and you'll learn more about that in the globulin section. So the next lecture that is not part of this pre-class stuff, we're going to actually talk a lot about albumin because decreases in albumin are something that we see commonly, but I'm just going to kind of give you a sneak preview. So when you have a selective decrease in albumin, meaning only albumin's decreased and a globulin's not decreased, we think of um, two things. One of them is going to be loss of albumin, and the other is going to be decreased production of albumin. And so this selective loss of albumin is typically protein-losing nephropathy, and it's, some, it's a glomerular disease, although we can also see tubular loss of albumin. We'll talk about that both in that albumin lecture and then when we get to kidneys. And so protein-losing nephropathy means that there's some glomerular, usually, disease, although, again, it can be tubular. And what we're going to look for is we're going to look for protein in the urine called proteinuria, um, and so that would be on our protein dipstick for something called a UPC. We'll talk a lot more about this later. Decreased production, again, albumin's made in the liver, so it can be due to liver failure. And we talked a little bit about liver failure when we talked about coagulation problems and liver failure. So you're going to look for decreases concurrently in urea, cholesterol, again albumin, glucose, and prolongation in PT and PTT. The more common one, and my writing's terrible today, so the more common one is actually inflammation because albumin is a negative acute phase protein, and so with inflammation, and this can be acute or chronic inflammation, your albumin production will decrease. So you're going to look for an inflammatory leukogram to think that this is what's happening. So the one time that we see kind of a selective decrease in globulin, although there's other times, but most often is failure of passive transfer um, in large animals. And we'll briefly touch on this.